what is going on guys welcome to another video if you're new here thanks for checking out the video my name is jeremy and this is jeremy's wild world now it's all from today's title today's video is going to be the footage i recorded yesterday at the southeastern arachnid show as well as the pickups i got now i just wanted to quickly say that i'm recording this the very next day after the show so if my voice sounds a little groggy i'm not ill i'm just still tired i'm recovering from the show it was very very good but it was very very tiring and yeah it was the very first time that i attended these and i had a fantastic time meeting you guys as well as getting some fantastic pickups and i also want to give a massive massive shout out to tony for allowing me to help out at the table again thank you so much dude as well shout out to chris from Scarna Exotics, big, big, big thank you to you, dude. It was very much appreciated you helping me out and my friend at the end of the show. We were struggling to get a taxi and he gave us a list to the station. So thank you to you, dude. It was really, really kind of you. You didn't have to do that. And again, thank you so much. And yeah, so before we get into today's video, guys, I just want to quickly say that according to my YouTube statistics, a lot of you guys who watch my videos are subscribed. So if you enjoyed today's video and you want to see more, click that subscribe button as well as the notification bell down below so you don't miss out on future content. Now, without further ado, let's start off today's video by showing you the footage I got. Now you're probably wondering, Jeremy, I was expecting some more clips. What happened? Now, what happened was I got a little bit too excited and I forgot to record pretty much. I was spending a lot of time at the tables and talking to people and looking at the variety of stock there. That was a really nice variety of the show. Uh, those dragon hated Katie did were awesome. No, I did not pick them up simply because I care about my sleep. And if I did pick them up, you'd probably be hearing a male screeching right now. <laughs> I keep all my bugs in my bedroom. So I really don't want that Katie did screaming at night. Um when uh, i'm sleeping i care about my sanity <laughs> so maybe in the future when i get like a shed or somewhere else to put my inverts um, i'll consider picking some up in the future uh, also they had those oreo trapdoors really really cool species i didn't personally get one because i already have one uh, but my friend got one and really really stunning and yeah so let's stop all that and get into what i picked up now moving on to the pickups part of today's video as always i'll start off by showing you the dry goods now dry goods wise i didn't actually pick up too much as pretty much nothing at all really um i was really going there for pork bark um, i was thinking about picking some enclosures up but didn't want to lug that around because i do take the train and i just didn't want to carry enclosures with me this time around so i just met there for cork bark and i was also gifted some stuff from tony so i'll start off by showing you guys that so he gave me a couple bags of supplies this being two bags of rotten white wood very much appreciated always comes in handy with my spot enclosures and uh if i do ever get some millipedes which i do plan on getting because at the show they had these really gorgeous ones and may have to pick one up next time didn't did, didn't this time around but maybe next time uh but yeah two bags of rotten white wood as well as two bags of leaf litter so got this from helping out the table thank you again uh leaf litter always comes in handy of course for me isopods they eat that as well as uh, i can give it to the roaches i'll eat that as well and i can always brush it up and use it as decoration in the enclosure so i have all of that there's and pretty much i'm not gonna take both out but i got a couple kilos of cork bark from the spy shop and they came in these cool little mesh bags and i got some nice variety i didn't go for tubes this time I went for flat pieces um, but i did get some nice variety and everything and as you can see uh, nice sizes in here i've got two bags of this uh six pounds each so really really good price um but yeah so that's pretty much the dry goods so now we get into the livestock 
was just about to start recording the livestock pickups I got at the show and I noticed this little guy inside the uh, bag of leaflets. I don't know if you can see that very well, but this is a zebra jumper, a native jumper species here in the UK. Large one, don't worry. I just noticed her now, so I will be taking her out and possibly releasing her when it gets a little bit warmer. Uh, I'll feed her up and keep her as well. Um, but yeah, that's pretty cool. Didn't notice that at first, so yeah. Guess I got a jumping spider today. <laughs> so apart from that random little jumping spider that I found in my leaf litter bag of all things, now we move on to the actual pickups I got from the show. So I'm going to start things off by showing you some inverts I acquired through trading as well as the gift that Tony gave me as a thank you for helping him out at the table. So we'll start off with that and this being an absolutely gorgeous Scolopendra species in Nicaragua. So I do actually have one of these already but I'm not complaining whatsoever simply because these centipedes are absolutely gorgeous. You just see the coloration, really really unique coloration with the olive green slash dark green back with the yellow legs and the orange uh, toxicognaths, I think that's how you pronounce it, the little modified legs that inject venom. Um, but yeah, really, really stunning specimen and could potentially be a sex pair. Um, it's a little tricky sexing centipedes, uh, but I will give it a go. And if I have a sex pair, really, really cool, could breed some centipedes. If not, I have two really stunning centipedes nonetheless. Now, you can see it's just digging here. Uh, really, really funny just digging up the vermiculite. Um, but this is a species of centipede that I would recommend to beginners simply because of the size. This is pretty much a fully grown specimen. So if you are intimidated by the larger species of centipedes like the Tahani and some spinipedes, this uh, little species is really, really cool to have for the coloration and the size. This is pretty much full grown. And yeah, so thank you, Tony, for getting me this. Really, really appreciate it, dude. And yeah, so let's show you the inverts I got through trading now. So, uh, oh, actually, I want to show this off first. Um, Ian from Ian's Tarantulas, uh, he was working with the guy with Bakma Breeding. I believe that's the name of the company. They were right next to us, and we were talking to them pretty much all day when it was quiet. Uh, it's really, really hectic. He was like, Really, really busy, then it went quiet, then it went busy again. Um, but regardless, I was talking to them about some stuff and he gave me a sticker. So I really, really appreciate that, dude. Thank you so much. That's gonna go on my really crowded sticker board now. Uh, but I hope you enjoy your stickers too. And guys, if you don't know, I do have some YouTuber stickers. So if you're interested, PM me on Instagram and I can get some sent out to you. Uh, but yeah, so thank you, Ian, for the sticker. Very much appreciated. And uh, now we move on to the inverts I got through trading. Uh, this starting off with the um, isopods I got. So Phil over from in Incredible Inverts and Other Animals. Oof, almost slipped my tongue there. <laughs> but yes, Phil, Phil, uh, we were discussing that we have some Kigala species panda king and we exchanged some colonies in order to add fresh bloodline into our colonies. So as you can see here, here are some species panda king, Cubaris. Really, really happy with having some more uh, because I've really taken off in my colony. I have been selling some, but I just want to add some fresh blood. You can never add enough uh, just to keep the diversity of genetics so your colonies don't crash. Um, it was really, really nice meeting you, Phil, and it was great talking to you about certain things. Um, really, really interesting talk about blue death vein beetles. That was really, really cool. Hopefully, I can breed some in the future. That's a goal of mine to actually breed them. Um, but yeah, so Kibara species Panda King. I think he said there was about seven in here. I haven't done a head count yet, but that does look to be a little more than seven. Ooh, thank you very much, Phil. Very much appreciated. Um, but yeah, so that is Cubara species Panda King. I'll just pop those to the side. And now for the last one I acquired for a trade, I got this from Ben's from Ben's Pets. He was looking for some dead stock and I offered some stuff that I had. And in exchange, he gifted me this. Now this is an absolutely gorgeous species of true spider. And this is a male. Heteropoda boi, also known as the Lichen Huntsman. Very, very beautiful. It's actually currently feeding on a cricket. Um, I did feed all the predatory inverts I picked up uh, today, uh, simply because I just wanted to make sure they were doing all right, feeding well. Um, but yeah, you can see just the coloration. I wish the glare wasn't too bad. Don't worry, guys, I'll be using my light box later on to get better footage of all the inverts I got today. Um, but yeah, so that's an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous male. And that may give you a hint of what I got as well. Ooh, exciting, exciting. So, those are the gifts as well as the trades. Oh, dropped your cricket there, mate. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so this, these two are the got, uh, inverts I got through trading. And this is the centipede that I got gifted by Tony. So now we can move on to pickups I actually pay money for now. <laughs> Moving on to the inverts I actually paid money for now, uh, 
I'm going to start off by showing you another invert that I got from Tony over at Venom's Visions and this being an absolutely gorgeous Panda Palpus Viatoris, also known as the Cave Claw Scorpion. This is actually a sexed female. Now I did actually purchase a male from him as well, so this is going to be a breeding project for me as I did say I want to be working with scorpions this time around and you can just see here, absolutely gorgeous. These were actually a pandanus species before they were reclassified. You can kind of see the reason why they were considered a pandanus species. So your Empress Scorpion. But there are some significant differences and of course there are genetic differences as well. You can see like the red claws here and just really, really beautiful. And I can't wait to do that. Um, I don't know whether or not I'm going to be doing a breeding video or a breeding stream. I may do a video for these guys because I want to get some really nice footage of this um so i've only seen a couple of videos on youtube of people breeding these and that's when they were still considered pandanus um so hopefully i can get these breeding and yeah so let's move on to stuff that i picked up from the spider shop of course if you go to the invert shows in the uk there's no way you can go to them without passing by the spider shop table and the seeds was no exception because i knew what they were going to have and they had some really really cool stuff so starting off with a pair of stag beetles i picked up this being the Homoderus gladiator, also known as the gladiator stag beetle. I'm just going to be showing you the male today, uh, just because he's actually out right now. And I'm going to be featuring these guys in a setup video uh, later on. But as you can see here, really, really gorgeous. And what's great about them is they're not that big as well. So if you're looking for a species of stag beetle that won't take up a lot of space, these guys are the ones to go for. Love the coloration on these. Uh, they remind me of the hooded stag beetles. I believe they're in the same genus Homoderus. I don't know the exact scientific name for the other one, but Gladiator is really, really pretty. Not a lot of um, information in regards to breeding them, but if I'm going off how stag beetles breed, of course you'll need some breeding logs, but I will be explaining that in the setups video uh, once I get the time to sit down and record that. Um, but yeah, so have a new species of beetle I'm working with. Um, so yeah, look forward to a video coming out about these little ones soon. So yeah, uh, 30 pounds for the pair, really, really good price. Um, there were a variety of beetle species there, but I decided just to go with the Homoderus just because, um, I, I don't know, I just really like the look of them. <laughs> and yeah, so what else did I get? Also got a scorpion from them too, uh, this being the Heterometris spinifer. I'm just gonna pop the lid off here and get you guys a better look. Really, really good size, and this is a sexed male. And yeah, just take a look at him, absolutely gorgeous really really nice size and of course going to be a breeding project as well uh, this is a sex male because i did have a look at the little feathery things that are underneath him i'm going to pop the scientific term for them here uh, but yeah so the males will have larger ones of those little feather things whereas the females will have smaller ones and also sex differentiation will be that the males will have larger claws and the females will have smaller ones and the male's body will be a lot more skinnier whereas the females will be a lot wider of course if they're eating well it's kind of hard to tell the difference, but that's why it's best to go off with the little feathery things uh, underneath them. And yeah, so Heterometrous Spinifer. So I've got a couple of breeding scorpion pairs um, in the making now, which is really, really exciting. And yeah, so these two that are left, oh my God. When Lee mentioned to me that he was getting a Malaysian import and he was getting some Huntsman in, I had to pick them up at the show. And I'm going to start off by showing you the reason why I traded Ben, his male Huntsman is because I picked up a female. So this is a female of the Heteropoda boi and very distinctive difference between the two. Uh, females will be much more washed out in color and you can tell it's a female if I just zoom in here. Next to her fangs, you see those little red spots? Uh, when it comes to huntsmen, wolf spiders, uh, that's a really clear way uh, for telling whether they're female or not. And yeah, so they had a quite a few of these. Um, I was actually digging around in the box before they actually got the Huntsman out. And I was really, really happy that I found this girl. Really, really healthy. She was eating earlier. And yeah, so can't wait to breed those. I still gotta wait for the male to mature. He's probably maybe a molt or two away. And yeah, so I'll pop that one, put that to the side. I'll put that one there. So Heteroprota Boi, also known as the Lycan Huntsman. Female, I have a sex pair of them. And this is a species of huntsman I've been wanting for a very, very long time, probably over a year now. And now I finally had the opportunity to do so. And that being the Heteropoda David Bowie, also known as the Stig Ziggy, Stiggy, Ziggy Star Stardust Huntsman. And 
this is a sexed female as well. It's a little fogged up in the cup right now, but you can see, if I just zoom in here, you can see the little red spots on the side of her fangs. And she's a really, really good size as well. Uh, she was probably one of the larger uh, Heteropoda David Bowie that were in the box. And I'm glad that I managed to pick her up before they um, put them on display. But yeah, so that is really, really awesome. Great pickups from the spider shop, as you can see. And you guys are always taking my money. Lee, if you're watching. Sam, if you're watching. You guys are always taking my money. But you guys get some fantastic stock in. Especially that girl. I'm really, really happy with her. Both of them. Everything. I'm, I'm really happy with everything. But I'm so happy to finally have a large David Bowie and a large Bowie eye in my co the collection. And yeah, so let's stop talking about the spy shop because I've got a couple more pickups to go through. And I'm going to lump those all in together now. So yeah. That's the Spider Shop pickups, let's move on to the others. And finally, we move on to the last of the pickups I got from the show. Now, although they are coming from different companies, I'm just going to lump them all in together just because I don't want the video to drag on too long for you guys. Because bear in mind, I still got to record some really nice footage and show off every single pickup that I got. So yeah, I'm going to start off by showing you a couple of slings I got. These being the absolutely gorgeous Linotheli Phalax. Now, as you can see here, got two. Uh, they were £12 each, really, really good price. and. You see that they're quite chunky because I did feed them earlier some small crickets and this one's still feeding really really beautiful and you can you can see why I love Linotheli um, just because of the way they web like they're just in a sling pot and the webbing is so thick and really really nice looking. Uh, I will give an update eventually on my Linotheli Megatheloides I rehoused recently. She has webbed up that tub really really well and she's grown a lot. She's molted recently and she's huge now. Um, but hoping these two are a sex pair. Uh, my friend also got one as well, so the potential for an opposite sex sling is pretty decent. Um, if not, regardless, I had two Linotheli Phalax and I can always buy some more in the future if a uh, female comes up and have two males and stuff like that. But yeah, Linotheli Phalax, really, really awesome species, really, really good price. Now, moving on to a pickup I was not expecting to get, and this being an actual mantis. I wasn't actually going to show for a mantis this time around, um, but yeah, you can see here that is actually a ghost mantis, but this isn't your bog standard ghost mantis. This is a green female. Now you can see here, guys, she is absolutely beautiful. And what's funny is I actually picked up the other thing I'm gonna show you in a minute from the same table. For the life of me, I can't remember who these guys were, um, but regardless, saw this little one at the very back. They had a few ghost mantis and this was literally the very last one at the back. I was just looking through and then I saw the coloration. I was like, no way, green ghost. And for that price, I'll pick it up as well. Really, really gorgeous, really nice size as well. And hopefully I will be able to maintain her green coloration to adulthood. But if not, regardless, um, she does have the green genes. So I will definitely be breeding her or attempting to breed her in the future uh, to try and get some potential green ghosts in um, my collection again. So yeah, Green Ghost Female, that was supposed to be £10, but picking up this other pickup as well, this being Corsetis Spatulatus, I got a really, really nice deal. And as you can see, £30 these were, I believe, originally £35. But I picked these up um, halfway through a show um, when I was going to buy some raffle tickets for Tony. I passed by the table and just saw these guys and decided to pick them up. So that one just ran off, but I'll see if I can find some. Oh, there we go. And so I'm here, it's hiding underneath the moss, but as you can see, really stunning species of isopod. I love that they're a flat species. Uh, I would also love to get Corsellia one arrived, but unfortunately there were none at the show. But Spatulatus are one I also wanted to get. So absolutely fantastic, really, really good price. And I got a really, really good deal for them as well. So these were originally 35, knocked down to 30. The green Ghost was supposed to be 10 pounds, but she was like, you know what, 35 for both. I was like, Really? Yeah, 35 for both. So, the original price of these, I pretty much just got a free Ghost Mantis, so I was very much appreciated. Thank you so much. And yeah, so that was an awesome pickup. Porcelia Spatulatus, Green Ghost Mantis. Now, last two are going to be Tarantulas. There should be three, but um, that's actually one of them being the Formictopus, the Snail Eater. For the life of me, I can't pronounce the second name. Um, so, I'm just going to put it just down here. Uh, but yeah, I did have it. 
still own it, but my friend actually t accidentally took it home with him when he came around my house after the show, because uh, he picked one up too, but that's fine, um, I will get that back eventually and we'll show you off in the future. Uh, but yeah, so I did get the snail eating from Octopus, but he did give me some feeder snails as well, no need to show you those guys. Um, feeder snails, just to see if they'll actually eat them. Most likely, yeah, but they wouldn't call them a snail eater without them actually eating snails, right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that for Mictopus. Don't have it on me right now, but I did buy one of those at the show. £20, I believe it was. Um, but yeah, so this one, absolutely gorgeous. And I'm surprised. Like, this one I bought literally as the show was packing up. Like, they were packing up, we were packing up, and I was like, I've got some spare cash. I'm going to walk around and see what else I can find just before everyone's gone. And I came across this little one. I was like, wow, no one picked this up for the price it was. £30 for a juvenile bracket helmet Alvaceps. That is a steal of a price. Just take a look at this tarantula. Absolutely gorgeous. Regardless if it's male or female, they are just beautiful, beautiful tarantulas. And really fantastic price. Like, this size, £30? Can't beat it. And this came from the tarantula room, I believe. Yeah, tarantula room. Um really really good price and they were literally about to pack it away i was like oh i'll take this for the price oh god even if it's on sex it doesn't matter to me um really beautiful tarantula regardless now this is definitely my favorite pickup because i've been looking for a female of this brachypalma yes it's another brachypalma uh, for a very long time and i was going to pick one up at the uh, brighton show but unfortunately i was um a I believe I was like 30 pounds short and but I'm glad I waited because this one is pretty much a mature specimen and for the price I got it for absolutely fantastic so from Martin Goss I got myself an adult female Brachypelma Amelia for 100 pounds now I was actually going to pick up a another one of this uh, specimen uh, not nearly the size probably just over juvenile size close to sub adult for £70 and I'm glad I waited because take a look at her. I'm not going to take the lid off because she is definitely one that likes to run around um, but maybe I can just pop the lid off here just so you can get an appreciation for her coloration but just take a look oh yeah that's all right hopefully she doesn't kick hairs at me um, but yeah Brachypelma Emilia adult female £100 now I just want to give a massive shout out to a couple of people uh, Lauren from inverts for introverts on instagram and ben for buying a few things you guys uh put the money in towards this spider uh so for buying some stuff from me so it's very very much appreciated guys thank you thank you so much and i'm so glad that i picked this girl up because i was walking by at the beginning of the show just before it started because i get in a little early thanks to tony um and i walked past her i was like wow there's an amelia there and I, I walked by again when i was looking around with my friend later on in the show near the end of the show i was like you know what sod it i'm going to buy it and i'm glad i did because she is just beautiful beautiful tarantula oh god i can't believe i have one but yeah so those are the pickups from the southeast america show i hope you guys enjoyed the video let's get into some close-up pics and clips of these beautiful specimens and we'll end today's video
So that is the end of today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing the footage I managed to collect to seize, as well as enjoyed seeing what I decided to pick up at the show. Now, I'm really, really happy with everything I decided to pick up, and I can't wait to start off some breeding projects here in 2022, especially with the Huntsman. It's going to be really interesting. I have been watching a few videos on pairings and stuff, and I have taken some notes, so fingers crossed I can get some captive bred Huntsman into the hobby, as well as some captive bred Scorpions, and as well as the other projects I have planned for 2022. And I just want to say before I end the video, a massive again shout out to Chris from Scarner Exotics for helping us out uh, near the end of the show. It was really, really kind of you dude to drop us off to the station. I know it doesn't seem like much, but it really was a massive appreciation, dude. And thank you so much. So that's the end of today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell down below so you guys don't miss out on future content. I also really appreciate if you guys would follow me on Instagram, Jeremy's Wild World, underscore where Jeremy's Wild World dot sales. I'm really active on Instagram, posting pictures and videos of the animals and inverts I keep. When I don't upload on YouTube. That's all for me today, guys. Leave a like, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye. Yay!